Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in the ShredderGamingTag.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. We have lots of news to get through in this video. I want to start things out, though, with several things pertaining to AMD, the first of which is Renoir, and these APUs are going to be moseying on to the AM4 platform very shortly, at least according to a leaked slide from Gigabyte. And this was uh, posted on social media. Uh, Hassan from WCCF Tech plonked it onto Twitter. And there are several very interesting things which this slide confirms. But as I said, we'll tackle the Renoir thing first. Those are APUs which are based on the Zen 2 microprocessor architecture and are snuggled up very lovingly with uh, enhanced Vega cores, and they've been doing very well in the laptop uh, space. They've been very much excelling in terms of performance, also price, but also battery life is pretty impressive as well. And it's naturally putting lots of pressure on Intel in that market segment because, yes, Desktop is important, but ultimately, laptops are replaced more frequently than desktops. Like, there's a pretty good argument that if you have a CPU like, let's just say for sake of argument, a 3770K, which is fairly well overclocked, that could still run a decent graphics card now. Um, you could happily run a game on an RTX 2060 Super, for example, very happily with a CPU such as that. Now, obviously, games are going to start uh, really take advantage of more processor threads, but my point is that a CPU which is five, six, seven years old can still drive frame rates relatively well in modern titles, but your mileage, of course, will vary. The fact is, though, most laptops don't really last that long because of obvious wear and tear issues, and so they are replaced more uh, frequently anyway, and also mobile performance has definitely come a long way recently. Anyhow, um, when it comes to APUs for the desktop, I suspect that uh, Renoir will be popular amongst maybe budget builders and it does also have PCIe expandability, albeit limited to just generation three. And that's a bit of um a bit of a shame, quite frankly. But then again, these CPUs or APUs to be more precise are not necessarily going to be something that you're gonna pair anyway with let's say a 3080 Ti or whatever. Um so the biggest problem might be storage, and even then um, but either way, at least you do have expandability options, and in the future you could put in a discrete GPU. The fact of the matter is, though, that even if you choose not to do that, these are going to be perfect for things like office tasks or just like gaming. For example, like CSGO or something like that would be absolutely perfect on this, and of course, uh, games like League of Legends, and, you know, basically it, it's a pretty nice little workhorse, and given it does have 8 core 16 threads at a modest clock frequency, we can imagine that it's still going to put out an awful lot of performance. As a quick reminder as well, we'll see the B550s launch later on. Uh, basically, every single um, AIB and their mother has already emailed me press statements about that, but everyone knows about them anyway. And later on in the year, we will also see A520s. Back when the original Zen architecture launched, uh, we did see a 520s come to the market as well, but um, obviously they're not necessarily designed with power users in mind. There are typically major cuts with, let's say, overclocking functionality, and of course the boards themselves don't exactly have the most robust of VRMs, so I would not buy this and then try to plonk in like a 16-core monstrosity and then overclock it to the stratosphere. You're probably not going to have the best performance, and that's well, putting it extraordinarily mildly. But, as I mentioned, there are a couple of AMD things, and the next one I'd really like to discuss is a refresh of Matisse. And um, well-known Twitter user HXL said that the 3750 and the 3850X will be incoming, and these will see a 6 slash 16 release and a 7 slash 7 they will start to sell. So that means that uh, these processors will be on sale a year to the day that uh, we first saw the Ryzen 3000 series launch, which is kind of interesting. Oh, by the way, 
uh, credit to Jim over at Adore TV for actually mentioning that we would see some type of refresh or a Zen Plus um, launch, but um, unfortunately we're not still 100% what this architecture is going to bring to the table. There are a lot of theories, of course, one of which is that it's going to simply increase the clock frequency. Now, bear in mind, just for this, I'm just going to say July, so I don't keep saying 7 slash 7 and I don't go insane. But with July, and the rumour is that we'll see uh, RDNA 2 launch in September, but whether RDNA 2 will also be accompanied with Zen 3 or whether that will be at a different day is not known. At least Sue basically confirmed it would launch by the end of the year, that is Ryzen 4000. But let's just say for the sake of this video that things are delayed a bit, and it does launch in November, that is Ryzen 4000 series, as a worst case scenario. So you could have this thing where only several months later, a refresh is now an older architecture. So what would be the point? Well, bear in mind a couple of things. One, Intel have done it with, let's say, the 9900KS. And two, we don't know what AMD's plans are as they roll out the 4000 series. Maybe they will focus purely on the high-end parts first. So let's say the 16 and 12 core parts. And then these other parts will basically come later on. And then they will sell them cheaper and then essentially start to roll them out. AMD have also done the same in the past. We've seen that the 1600 AF, which is essentially a rebadged version of the 2600. So, yeah, there is definitely precedent there for AMD to do something like this. And as for what the changes are, well, it could be something to do with the way the cores themselves are laid out in terms of the CCXs. Um, and there could definitely be a lot of mileage there. But the other thing is they could simply crank the clock frequencies up a little bit. Now, it's very interesting because when I was in a um, press briefing with AMD, they actually told us that the um, manufacturing process was a lot more mature now. And they said that you can kind of go ham overclocking the 3100 and 3300. But they seem to imply that this uh, improved process was basically part and parcel of chips. So I do wonder if that's one of the ways that they've essentially um, improved the 3750 and the 3850X. So they're simply just going to raise clock frequency because of an improved process. It's going to be interesting if they do that. Uh, naturally, this is in partly a response to Intel's uh, release of their own processors, Comet Lake, but it's just kind of a uh, curious thing, and I wonder what Intel will face in terms of price competition from AMD. Oh, and a very small thing, actually. AMD's Frank Azur was recently being interviewed by WCCF Tech, and they actually touched a little bit on terms of smart shift for Renoir, and there's something very interesting they stated, and that is that the workload power can shift within 2 milliseconds, depending on workload demands. And I've mentioned this in a previous video, but a source of mine for the PlayStation 5 told me that workloads can shift ridiculously quickly, like way under the millisecond budget that you're looking at for PSVR. Indeed, they said it could happen a couple of hundred times plus a second. So this does seem to tally up very well with what Frank has said in this interview. And now we're going to be shifting. Did you see what I did there? Come on, did you see it? It was very subtle. Anyway, uh, getting serious for a moment. Let's discuss a few things for Intel. The first of which is Tiger Lake has had some of its architecture details, well, detailed. And this is thanks to Momomo on Twitter. Um, from what we understand, Tiger Lake, of course, is a 10nm Ice Lake successor, but now we actually have some ideas as to the architecture. There will be several different designs for Tiger Lake, at least for mobile, and these will be 9 to 28 watts. This will be, of course, configurable depending on the system it's designed for. And it will be in a 4 plus 2 design, which means, of course, four CPU cores as well as two slices of the iGPU, which just as a reminder is generation 12. Uh, this does tally up as well with what we've learned previously, where there are 768 shading units, 
for Tiger Lake. And there are also several very interesting features as well. Tiger Lake seems to be about twice as fast as Ice Lake, with up to four times an improvement into over Generation 9. This once again tallies up with what we've seen previously uh, in other leaks. And furthermore, in terms of what the actual architecture can bring to the table, there are various enhancements to for encoding and decoding. And this does make an awful lot of sense because I know encoding and decoding is a very important thing in terms of uh, IGPUs for the Intel team. Uh, from what I've spoken to them, it's been a really big uh, kind of uh, pet project for a couple of them there. So this also makes a lot of sense. So now we have confirmation uh, that we see VP1 as well as H265 and HEV 12-bit decoding. And also full credit to Rogame for the discovery of several uh, Rocket Lake results. Now, Rocket Lake, as you are most likely aware, is the successor to Intel's Comet Lake and apparently will still be on the Z490 platform. But what exactly Rocket Lake is well, it's mysterious at best, and that's uh, putting it mildly. Um, what we know is that there's a change in the architecture compared to what Skylake brings to the table, but exactly what the architecture changes are, no one outside of Intel 100% knows. One theory is that it's Skylake, but with perhaps some tweaks to the caches or maybe some other bits and bobs. But there are also reports that it's not that. It's actually a backport of some description. But of course, what's changed with the actual architecture? Uh, for example, let's say it's Willow Cove. Is it basically a one-to-one -one port with Willow Cove, but obviously changed because of the node and the process, or is it something entirely different and is kind of some weird hybrid between Skylake and Willow Cove? No one really knows. The fact of the matter is, though, that at least we have a benchmark of it. I suspect that this is going to become more prevalent. We're going to have more results as obviously it gets closer and closer to launch. One thing we do know is that Z490 motherboards do support PCIe 4, and motherboard vendors have kind of whispered that yes, they will be supporting it, and it will be on the LGA1200 socket. After that, we will see another socket, which is going to be the 1700 socket, and of course we've discussed that several times in the past. Long story short though, this is a 6-core 12-thread model, and it's 3.5 GHz for the base frequency, 4200 MHz for boost. Now this is the highest scores that Rogue Games managed to find in the 3 d Mark uh, 11 database, so obviously there are some results which are a little bit lower, and if you compare that against a 10400, well, the 10400 is actually outperforming it. So what the hell's going on? Because, ultimately, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, if it is an improved architecture, given the clock frequencies are essentially identical, Skylake has like, well, 100 megahertz extra, but with an improved uh, IPC, which a new architecture should bring to the table, that should just be easily, like, you know, stomped. Well... There's a couple of theories. One is that, uh, well, I mean, first of all, it could be fake result. But the other option is that because it's an early engineering sample, something on the chip itself is just not functioning correctly. Or the chip could be misreporting its clock frequency. For all we know, the all of the CPU cores aren't boosting correctly or maybe something else is going on and the performance is not where it should be. We've actually seen that some reports of uh, the CPUs should be able to go up to 5 gigahertz. Personally, I'll believe it when I see it, but then it is on a mature 14 nm process, so I could kind of see that. Nevertheless, the bottom line is we know that these CPUs are only, at the moment, questionable on how they will take on AMD's Zen 3 processor architecture. We've also seen from uh, leaked slides from videocards.com that the iGPU in this thing will also be the Intel uh, XE graphics architecture, which means that at least some parts of the core are entirely redone. Ultimately, at the moment, it's way too difficult to know how Intel will compete, and it's gonna be very curious to see what the, happens to the market in the next few years. Um, Personally, I'm excited either way.
Naturally, Zen 3 is going to be kind of the send-off for the AM4 platform, at least according to what we know thus far. Whether there'll be like a Zen 3 kind of refresh like we saw with Zen 2, obviously with the 3750X here, or whether we will just see a quick transition after all AMD are not really ruling anything out and I'm hearing mixed things. We know that the next platform will be AM5 but given that that's supposedly using DDR5 memory I do wonder if AMD will end up delaying it a little bit simply because of the cost of DDR5. Ultimately there's still a lot of questions unfortunately which are up in the air. Anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video. The normal stuff if you did like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.